Hello, hello, hello. It's uh, James again from the Royal People's Assembly. Uh, it's our weekly uh, vlog on uh, national news, international news, local news, what we're up to and doing. Um, so it's been uh, more than a week since the last one. Um, I usually do them on a Monday. Today's Tuesday. Uh, because uh, I didn't get time to do one yesterday <laughs> for, for a related um, and interesting uh, reason <laughs> um, which I will touch on but I can't really get into in depth um, at the moment really um, but uh, uh, so let's see what's been in the headlines really so well today it's been or yesterday should I say it's all about yesterday it's the same sort of stuff going on really Brexit's still uh, in a sort of, or the Brexit deal, Mrs May's deal, is in a sort of a slow motion um, self-destruct by all by the looks of it at the moment. She seems to be in a slow motion sort of uh, exit herself. Uh, I saw today that DUP, Arlene Foster and the DUP uh, are coming out with even stronger statements um, about May herself and the deal, because of course the, the DUP are not happy that uh, this backstop temporary arrangement that's part of the deal, which the EU's now signed off on. I think they signed off, signed off, signed. Actually, I think they signed off on it, signed off on it yesterday, or yeah, I think it was yesterday, or over the weekend. So it's now, of course, into. Um, the ball's back in our ter territory, so it's it's now uh, the Commons vote, which is going to be early next month. Um, that came out yesterday, I think. It's around about the could be wrong, the eighth of next month, I think. The Commons vote on it. Um, so Mrs May's off as of yesterday, all around the country, trying to persuade um, the public. Sorry, I'm the glare on my glasses. The public uh, that it's a fantastic deal. Um, the mainstream media, the BBC, Sky News, all of her supporters uh, there, of course, all sort of editors and newscasters of the papers that are, that are sympathetic towards her and the Tories um, are all telling us what a fantastic deal it is and, you know, uh, how we should admire her. I, I, if I hear one more time the, from news anchors, uh, particularly, I have to say, on Sky News, I've heard it time and time again, that no matter what your opinion on Brexit or what a terrible or fantastic job she's done. Well, I've not heard anyone saying that apart from them. How we must admire her. We, she must admire her her ability to sort of well, do her job. Do part of her job, actually. <laughs> in as much as she can stand on her feet for... Or get up and sit down for three hours in the comments and answer questions. You know... I'll tell you what, I'll go around, I'll, I'll, I'll pop over to my Morrison's tomorrow and uh, tell everyone how I admire them for doing their jobs. And they actually do their jobs there. You know, negotiating Brexit so it was a good deal for us in Britain. <laughs> that was her job. So, uh, yeah, that's sort of driving me around the bend, and I suspect maybe you as well, hearing that constantly. Um, you know, I just like to tell these sort of newscasters and papers... She, you know, she's she's wealthy enough to, to afford her own to toilet paper. She doesn't need you as well, you know. And we don't need to hear it. Anyway, that's still going on. So that's a slow, a slow rolling uh, uh, juggernaut of um, what looks like ultimate uh, death for the deal, as it is. Um. Of course, there's all the sort of stuff going around. We're always experts, again, on Sky News and the BBC. Oh, well, um, if it's voted down, um, you know, it's Jeremy Corbyn's the bad guy. So she's not the bad guy. Jeremy Corbyn's the bad guy. The fact that Corbyn and Labour haven't been in charge or in power or in government for the two years that, sh that the Tories have been, and they've been negotiating all, negotiating all in secret. Remember that? Two years we go in. It's been one two years now because it was June 2016. So for more than two years, everyone's been going. Can you tell us what you've been doing? Can you tell us what your what your, the plan is? No. 
Did you tell us anything about it? No. Nope. It's all been done in secret. Uh, it turns out that uh, whoever's Brexit minister doesn't really matter. It's a figurehead post because actually it's been May herself with her chief uh, civil servant um, in ch as part of the department for Exit in the EU who have been sort of doing it uh, and negotiating things almost um, by themselves with their little teams now, but by themselves. The Bre whoever's been Brexit minister, so who did we have? We had uh, David Davis, then we had uh, Rob, Dominic Rob for about five seconds. Now we've got this new guy, no one's that place, is he a dual minister somewhere else? He was in it now, but it doesn't really matter who it is because it, it, we found out it's just a figurehead post. They don't get any say in it, which is why David Davis and, and Rob uh, stepped down really because they saw what she was doing. Um, she refused to let them have any input at all <laughs> as the Brexit minister to amend the disaster that she's, she's served up. And uh, here we are, really. But uh, yeah, we had all the experts going, oh, well, you know, if, if, if it's voted down, um, we know we're to blame for that, don't we? And then, of course, we're into... Um, I don't know how they put it now. Uh, you know, uh, disaster territory, because either it's a, a, a no-confidence vote in the Commons where you need... According to them, you'd need two-thirds of the MPs to trigger it, which apparently is not true. You need... It's nowhere near two-thirds, actually. So that's not true for a start-off. Um, so you're not going to get a general election, all this kind of nonsense. Because, of course, they're, you know, just like I told you that we weren't going to get a, a vote to leave the EU during, during the Brexit... Uh, <laughs> during the sort of run-up to Bre uh, the Brexit... Um, uh, vote 2016 because of course they're no sod all you know they're just paid mouthpieces and they're mostly paid to give the point point of view of the establishment so don't listen to them they've got everything wrong in the past two years they got brexit the brexit vote wrong they got the uh may's snap election a year ago and what would happen to apparently which will wipe out uh, Corbyn and the Tory party, apparently. We got that completely wrong. Because they don't know what the hell they're talking about. They haven't learned the lesson at all. Because they don't understand or know what's really going on in the country. They don't know you or me. They don't understand you or me. They don't want to because they're perfectly comfortable in their lovely, sort of, I don't know, well-paid, uh, you know, metropolitan mostly sort of, uh, you know, Starbucks bleeding lifestyles, enjoying themselves, you know, getting their, I don't know, syruped up macchiatos in the morning or whatever they get. And they have no idea. And they don't care. Which we all know. Because <laughs> that's why we're here. You know, that's why we're in this, that's why this is going on. So, uh, yeah. Spare me the experts and pundits. Um, so really, uh, despite what they tell you and me, they don't know what's going to happen, really. I don't know what's going to happen. Um, a lot of, lots of them are coming out now saying, well, she might just scrape the vote. She might just about do it. But I I mean, I'm, I'm not going to get into the, the business of, 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 you know, soothsaying and looking into the future. I don't know. But from what I've actually seen and heard numbers wise, I'd be very surprised if she did get it through if she did get it through that by no that doesn't mean everyone's going to go oh okay then <laughs> that's that of course not <laughs> um if she doesn't get it through which seems to be much more likely as we sit here now uh, and, 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 and discuss it uh yes that means what they're calling hard brexit what hard brexit really means is we then have to trade with Europe in this world, on World Trade Organization sort of standard rules, which many, many, many other countries do. Yes, obviously some uh, industries that trade very closely or export to the EU for most of their business will, of course, 
uh, feel the impact of that. But then that's what she's supposed to have been sorting out for the past two years. So there's only one person to blame for that, and that's her. Um, so, uh, yeah, crashing out of the... They keep calling it crashing out of the EU if, if, if uh, it's voted down by, you know, all of these traitors like um, Labour and uh, the SNP. And, of course, don't forget the DUP, who apparently weren't traitors, but now potentially, according to them, are, depending on which way they vote. Um, so that's all immensely annoying. <laughs> immensely annoying and uh, just the usual spouting of nonsense um, and things that they don't know about. And they don't know what's going to happen, so let's see what happens there. But uh, constitutionally, I think it's very interesting because, I mean, unlike Germany, you know, who, of course, you would say is a central country and figure in the EU, the driving force in the EU, by the EU, Germany and France, uh, and the US, we don't have a codified constitution. So, to say it doesn't get through, say May then has to go, because it hasn't got through, because she's completely um, nailed her, her reputation to this deal. So I can't see how she could possibly carry on if it doesn't get through. Um, even if they change their leader, and therefore we get a different Prime Minister we haven't elected. We didn't, you know. Um, constitutionally, we're in a bit of a mess, I think, because I just don't think the public, uh, or a large section of the public, I don't think a large section of the MPs and the Lords are going to be certain about what, 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 what happens next or what to do. So constitutionally, you, you could be going into a, a, a sort of small or large constitutional crisis, um, which may well lead to a general election, you know, may well lead to a, a minority Labour government working with the SNP or the Liberals. So that's certainly not out of the question at all. That's, that's, that really is on the cards. Um, as far as I understand it, I, I saw um, John McDonnell calling for this in the papers, as far as I understand it, constitutionally, if it turns out that May can't get this through, and then the DUP, because the DUP has already started before the weekend, and over the weekend, they've already started withdrawing their support. So the amount of votes that she needs to get things through uh, as a sort of a foretaste of them not being happy and what will happen. So if that, if that, if their distaste grows and continues, and they completely decide that abandoning, the, the abandoning, uh, sorry, abandoning this deal is better, as far as they're concerned, than a potential general election or potential Labour government, which is looking like it might, that might be going that way, you're going to have a government who can't get anything through. And if you've got a government that can't put any business through, can't govern, basically, can't legislate, that's a constitutional crisis. Um, and then what's supposed to happen is uh, whoever party in opposition, which of course is Labour, then goes to uh, the Queen of all people. <laughs> this is how much number 21st century. It was the Queen of all people and says, uh, let us form a government. That's if the, if the government won't give us a general election. But uh, I think if it got to that point, I think there'd be millions and millions of ordinary people like us saying, well, if you can't, you can't, Govern, you can't do anything, you can't get any legislation through. We're now just sort of stuck in uh, a no man's land, a stalemate. And of course, we need to legislate for the deal after um, actually brexiting, exiting early next year. And Northern Ireland, what goes on there, is still going to be up for debate uh, and sorting out. Um, the pressure is going to be for them to go. To at least hold a general election, uh, or to to give Labour a chance to to form a government. So uh, don't believe what you're hearing from the May supporters, the so-called experts and pundits on the main channels. Uh, so that's all interesting. I'm just hoping nothing's called within the next month because I've got to finish my. <laughs> I'm still at university trying to finish my dissertation struggling to do it because I'm so busy doing 
just thought, you know, organising street protests, organising our um, the Real People's Assemblies, we need a general election sort of new campaign. We had a meeting about that last week, and many sort of key players in the area turned up, which was fantastic, uh, to decide, uh, so we could talk about what, what we could do locally here. If uh, you agree with us and you'd like to sort of tell us what you're doing where you are in your part of the world, please comment below, let us know. Um, so, yeah, I'm sure there's other news, but that's sort of consuming everything because a lot of things depend on this. Obviously, the same, the, the problem with all this, of this uh, Brexit stuff sort of consuming all the news and, and, and everything really, is that of course what's going on and has been going on for uh, virtually eight years under the coalition of Tories is that um, disabled people are literally dying hand over fist, suffering before they die because the system doesn't work, it's humiliating, um, you know, there's people literally terminally ill who can't, who just can't get what they're supposed to be getting to help them sort of live out their lives and get the care they need. Uh, obviously, this is the continuing universal credit debacle. There's the the, the UN uh, special rapporteur um, has actually published his full report now, um, and he specifically talks about how uh, the UK government have deliberately targeted uh, the disabled to make their lives unbearable, um, and just kill them off basically. Um, it's just a bit. What's amazing is, of course, is they have just sat there and said, "Well, we reject the the report," and the Rudd's just said, "Well, I reject the UN's findings report," which is just bizarre, absolutely bizarre. <laughs> you know, they usually send special rapporteurs on poverty to to you know sort of third world countries, you know, where apparently the whole system's in collapse. But here we are in this, one of the richest countries in the world. Run by the Tories, or apparently the, you know, the party of business and the economy. Yet we've got, according to the UN, and a special special rapporteur, people literally dying hand over fist, disabled people, poor people, suffering. And there was when there's no need for for it to happen. It's a matter of policy. It's not by mistake. You know, they've I've said this for years and years. It's now in the report. It's not by mistake. It's by design. The Tories knew when they were implementing all of this, because they have to do impact assessments, which they, when they got into power, stopped publishing, because previously they were published, and they changed the law so they didn't have to publish them. So they knew what they were, so they knew that all of these changes they made, how they'd impact people. But of course they kept it a secret, because they didn't want people to know, they didn't want the backlash. Um, they didn't want the public backlash because of the what will come out in, in the press eventually. But of course, you know, people have been allowed to die in their hundreds of thousands, that's what we're literally talking about, over the past six years, six, seven years, because the press, uh, on the whole, the mainstream media, have been covering for, for the Tories. They've been ignoring it. So they're just as culpable, I'm afraid, in my opinion. Um, I'm sure many of you all agree with me, maybe some of you all disagree with me. If you disagree, Please comment below. It'd be very interesting to read uh, uh, exactly where and on what points you disagree. Um, but uh, yes, yeah, so um, everything seems to be up in the air. We're still doing what we can do locally. Um, I'm having to step back a, a little bit myself to try and get this uh, this uh, master's dissertation finished. Um, which is in social policy, which is all, you know, basically um, heavily involved in all of this sort of stuff and its effects uh, up in North Wales here, where I am. And uh, yeah, I'm trying to think about the news, but <laughs> that's all. That's all I ever really see or hear about is 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 uh, Brexit. Um, I must say, if I have to see and hear one more interview or one more thing from Michel Varnier or Donald Tusk who's the president of uh, 
the European Council, I think, or Juncker. No, it's Juncker, president of the council, I think it is. And I think Tusk is president of the... Uh, I can't remember. I always get confused which one it is. But anyway, they're not... They're effectively the people in charge of the EU. Totally unelect, unelected by you or I. Which is the whole problem. Which is my problem with the EU. Yet they have almost complete and utter control and power over the direction in which... All of it goes, you know. Um, I just find their... When I see them and find their sort of... And listen to their utterances and what they think about things, I just find it very... I just find them really sinister, to be honest. And I know I'm not the only one. Um, but as I tweeted to somebody quite well known last week, while May's still our... While May's our Prime Minister, uh, Jean-Claude Juncker... And Donald Tusk are our presidents, um, unfortunately. So, uh, anyway, that's the view from uh, Alexa to your left wing <laughs> Exeter. Again, you may disagree. Um, so, anyway, thanks for listening to my ramblings again for, I would say, moaning, well, it's supposed to be Moaning Monday, but I'll call it, uh, I don't know, I don't know, Tittle Tattle Tuesday, who knows, I don't know. Is it late? <laughs> it's quite late now to be honest it's not, t- it's, uh, not far off time for bed um, Jay's back that's just that's just there so I'm not changing that until I change um, you know, I said this was uh, f- uh, a famous post the last, I think in the last video from someone called uh, an artist called uh, Fitzgerald it's not it's Fitzpatrick there's the F you see the F there's the F Fitzpatrick so it's a it's a famous uh artistic uh, um, impression impression image of the famous photograph taking of Che uh, at a memorial service actually in Cuba which he attended but uh, attended with Castro and other leading figures um, so yeah it's quite interesting if you, if you google it you'll find out about the history of the image and the famous photo, but I think this actual poster was um, created by uh, uh, Fitzpatrick in 1967, uh, and it was actually supposed to be like a uh, uh, only a, well handmade, literally, basically, and uh, passed around, sort of, or sent out free to as many as many as, you could, as, many as you could make free to um, uh, socialist uh, groups in, in Europe, really around Europe so uh, now obviously an iconic image which is why it's on my wall <laughs> for an iconic image and obviously represents uh, a lot represents the struggle which is what I'm doing I put on my I was going to wear a red tie because, but I thought that's a bit too on the nose you know and I'm sick of Trump and his red bloody tie so you know I've got my purple polka dot there you go so you can see that um, I'm hoping to get a HD camera at some point soon because this is quite, quite low quality. But um, we'll see how that goes. That's part of the struggle. Getting the money together. I still haven't been able to sign on to Universal Credit yet. Um, it's been three weeks now <laughs> since I applied online. Still, still been, I haven't been able to verify my identity to the uh, satisfaction of the DWP. So that's a whole other issue. Um, but uh, if you look back to the last video here on the channel, you'll see that I was out again on Saturday with my mate Duncan. While the weather's still okay, uh, protesting against Universal Credit and arm in Saudi Arabia and what's happening with Yemen there. That's something we could have talked about, but it's gone a bit too long now. Um, and against uh, uh, renewal of Trident and the cost of that, really. You should pay for everything else. That we need to pay for. So uh, anyway, yeah, let's see what happens in the, in the week, and uh, I may stick up an, another video on something different. That I'm thinking about having a having a talk about, but uh, about the various different strands of the left and uh, what we do and don't seem to see eye to eye on, and 
how interesting that's been over the past couple of years for me personally. Anyway, I'll say ciao for now. Here's ciao from Che. And uh, see you next time.